Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. I'm Sean Gannett, this is Minute Math, and today we're going to learn about evaluating limits. We're going to evaluate each limit. So, I was given this limit. Limit as x approaches negative 1 of 5. Now, one thing we know is that 5 is just a constant. So as x approaches negative 1, we know, well, the graph 5, right? y equals 5 in a sense, we don't think like that. As x approaches negative 1 from there, there's no x value really to plug in. And so since we have a constant here, the limit is just equal to 5. There's nothing for 1 to be plugged into or checked or worked with, right? So 5 is always constantly there. So again, the limit is equal to limit as x approaches a negative 5 halves of negative x plus 2. Okay. Well, since this is just a polynomial, and a polynomial is continuous everywhere, we can take the limit okay, at any value. So we can plug this limit into that polynomial, directly substituting that in there. So this is going to be equal to, well, we have negative 5 x and for x, so we have, well, a negative, negative 5 halves plus 2 going on right there, okay? Now, simplify it down here, excuse me, a negative times a negative is positive, so we have positive 5 halves plus 2. Hopefully we're at, we're at a point now where we can add 5 halves plus 2, 2 really being 4 halves, right? So 4 halves plus 5 halves is a good old 9 halves. And there we have it, our limit. Is equal to halves. Limit as x approaches two of uh, x to the third minus x squared minus four. Okay. Well, limit as x approaches two of this polynomial of x to the third minus x squared minus four. Well, since it is a polynomial, we can directly substitute two in x there at that value, okay? So limit is going to equal the, when we plug it into the equation there, or function, really, okay? If it was a function, if I wrote it as a function, right? So since since we can do that, okay, we plug 2 in, so we have 2 to the third power minus 2 squared minus 4, and then from there, okay, we need to simplify. Well, 2 squared, uh, two, not 2 squared, 2 to the third power is 8, right? Minus 2 squared is 4, minus 4, okay? 8 minus 4, all right, be careful here. 8 minus 4 is 4 minus 4, which is a 0, okay? So our final answer here, this limit approaches 0, right? The limit as x approaches 2 is equal to 0. Limit as x approaches 1 of negative x squared over 2 plus 2x plus 4. Well, we can take the limit wherever it exists, right? Wherever our, our equation, if you will, here, polynomial here exists. Well, since it's a polynomial, polynomial is everywhere, right? All real numbers, so we can directly substitute 1 in for our x's to solve here. So, we have a negative 1 squared over 2 plus 2 times 1 plus 4. Okay, put a little parenthesis there going around the 1. Well, 1 squared is 1. We have a negative out front, so we have a negative 1 half right here. Plus 2 times 1 is 2 plus 4. Okay, well, let's go add 2 and 4 is 6. We have a negative 1 half plus 6 here. And now we need to combine this, right? Combine it together to uh, get our final answer. Well, <clears throat> 6 minus a half, 6 minus a half is 5 and a half, so we're at 5 and 1 half right here, and if you want to write that as an improper fraction, that's 11 halves. Either way, our final answer being 5 and a half, or 11 halves, if you will, to this limit. Limit as x approaches 3, negative square root of x plus 3. Okay. Well, 
we can only really, um, so this is a root function, one of our rules says root functions, wherever it exists in the domain, we can plug in directly that limit. So, since three is gonna exist in our domain, because, well, three, then for x3 plus three is six, we can take the square root of six, right? There's no, we're not taking the square root of any negative here. We can directly plug in three for x. So let's do that. We have negative out front, square root, three plus three. Well, like I just said, three plus three is six. We have a negative square root of six. And at this point, um, I think it's simplest as it is. Now, some people, you know, you might probably see you do prime factorization, but this one really can't break down anymore because six is two times three, and there's nothing you can really pull out. So our final answer here to this limit is very simple, actually. Kind of complicated with the root is negative square root of six. The limit as x approaches 3 halves of negative square root of 2x plus 4. Okay. Well, from there, we have a root function, right? A root function, we can take the limit wherever it exists. It is also continuous there, wherever it exists, right? So, we're going to plug directly 3 halves in. Now, luckily, 3 halves is a positive number. 3 halves comes to say it's positive, plus 4 is going to say positive. We're not going to have an issue of taking the square root of a negative. Okay? So at this point, we're going to take the limit by plugging directly 3 halves in for x. So we have a negative on the outside, square root of 2 times 3 halves plus 4. Okay? So let's just simplify this a little bit. The negative stays on the outside here. The square root of, well, 3 halves. 3 halves times 2, or 2 times 3 halves, the 2's cancel, leaving us just 3 plus 4, and 3 plus 4 is simply is 7. So we have this negative square root of 7. Now remember, negative is on the outside, so it's totally fine for a square root. And that is our final answer. Limit as x approaches 1 of a negative x minus 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 8. Right. Well, one thing we need to see here is that this is a quotient function, right? And so we really care about the denominator, and if that equals 0, we've got to think of something else, okay? So we'll be checking that as we substitute it, but quotient function is wherever it exists, uh, it's continuous, and it's good, okay? Uh, we can take the limit there. So let's go plug in 1 in for x. So the negative's out front, okay, now we're taking the limit. 1 up top minus 4 over 1 squared minus 6 times 1 plus 8. Okay. We can rewrite that and simplify a little bit. 1 minus 4 is a negative 3. So we have a negative 3 up top. But don't forget that little negative that's out front. Okay. 1 squared is 1 minus 6 times 1 is 6 plus 8. Okay. Again, keeping that negative out front here. Or at this point, if you want to eliminate that negative with a negative 3, we just have a positive 3 up top. Okay, let's, let's just do that with it. So negative times a negative is a positive 3. 1 minus 6 is negative 5 plus 8. Okay, 3 is safe up top. Negative 5 plus 8 is a positive 3. And 3 over 3 is a 1. And so our final answer here, our limit, as x approaches 1 of a negative x minus 4 over x squared minus 6x plus 8 is 1. x approaches 3 halves of negative x minus 3 over x squared plus x plus 1. Okay. Well, since we have a quotient function, we can plug in directly 3 halves and for x, provided this um, and each of the function exists there. So really, we can't divide by 0. So let's keep note, make sure that denominator does not equal zero, but we can plug in directly three halves. So we have a negative three halves up top, minus three, over three halves squared plus three halves plus one. Okay. Well, let's go simplify this. Okay, well, this three I can really write as, you know, uh, six halves, right? So let's, uh, let's kind of simplify it. I'm going to go to the like terms here. So over here, uh, three halves minus six halves, right? So I'm going to write three, but with the same base now, over 
that's 3 half squared. 3 half squared, you square the top and the bottom, you know the diameter. That's a 9 fourths, right? 3 squared is 9, 2 squared is 4. Well, let's rewrite 3 halves to have 4 as the same base there. So that's going to be a uh, well, 3 halves multiplied both by 2 is 6 fourths here. And then 1 is really 4 over 4. Okay. So let's go simplify this a little more. Over here, negative 3 halves minus 6 halves. Let's deal with the numerator first. Okay. Negative 3 halves minus 6 halves is a negative, okay, a negative 9 halves. Okay. We have a negative 9 halves. And the denominator, we add across the top. 9 plus 6 is 15 plus 4 is 19. So we add the positive 19 fourths. Now, if you're like me, I always get thrown off when I have a fraction divided by a fraction. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. Negative 9 halves divided by 19 fourths. Well, that's the same thing as writing the negative 9 halves times 4 over 19. I'm going to flip that 19 fourths. At this point, pretty simple to see. 2 and the 4, simplify the 2 up there. And negative 9 now times 2 is negative 18. So we have a negative 18 over 19. A final answer. The limit as x approaches pi of the sine of x. Okay. Well, sine is a trig function here, and trig functions are we can take the limit wherever they exist because that's where we want to be continuous. Okay. So we can plug pi directly in for x. So we have the sine now of pi. And the sine of pi is just zero. So this limit very quickly uh, we get our answer of just zero. The limit as x approaches 3 pi over 4 of 2 cosine of x. Okay. Well, again, cosine of 2 cosine of x, but cosine in the here is a trig function. We can plug directly our limit in for that value x, provided, provided that limit, um, it's in our domain, which cosine is a segment there. So we're going to plug 3 pi over 4 directly into x. So we have 2 now times the cosine of 3 pi over 4. Okay. Now the cosine of 3 pi over 4 is a negative, okay, we know it's a negative square root of 2 over 2. Okay. Well, this becomes fairly simple then. 2 and 2 will cancel, right? 2 by 2 is 1. So we have a negative square root of 2, and that is just our final answer. Give an example. Give an example of a limit that evaluates to 4. Okay. So, we want to find a limit, something that evaluates to 4. Well, a simple one here is if we get the limit as x approaches 4, okay, x approaches 4 of just x, okay. That limit, limit as x approaches 4, okay, we just have x itself, we can plug it in directly is straight equal to 4. And there we have it. Pretty simple. We also could do this. The limit as x approaches, let's say, 20, of the constant, which is 4. Okay. Well, it doesn't really matter what we're taking the limit as x approaches here. That constant is always going to be the value itself, and it is also equal to 4. So either one of these would be an example of a limit that approaches or evaluates to, to 4. To give an example, permitted to of a limit of a quadratic of a quadratic function where the limit. Evaluates to nine. Okay, so we're going to give an example of a limit of a quadratic function where the limit evaluates to nine. 
Well, <clears throat> there's two answers, or there's many answers. I'm going to give two here. The first one is the limit as x approaches, which is minus 3, but x approaches 3 of x squared. Okay? Well, this one's fairly simple because we can see, okay, we can plug directly 3 in for x, okay? So by doing that, 3 in for x, 3 squared, right? Because it's a polynomial, and we can plug it in wherever it exists, right? 3 squared is just 9. There we go. Pretty straightforward. Another one we can do, to change it up a little bit, is limit as x, let's say, approaches 2 of x squared plus 5. Okay? Well, again, polynomial would plug 2 directly in for x. 2 squared plus 5. 2 squared is 4, so we have 4 plus 5, which is also equal to 9. So either one, either one of these would work, okay, for this uh, critical thinking question. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. MinuteMathTutor.com